This is an instructional video on how to perform the double maddox rod. The double maddox rod is a subjective test and the gold standard used to detect and measure cyclotropias, which is the rotation of the eye inwards or in cyclotropia and outwards or excyclotropia. Cyclotropias are usually present with a vertical muscle palsy. On observation, the patient may have a noticeable horizontal or vertical deviation, however the torsional component may not be visible. The test can be performed in all positions of gaze for comparison. For this test we will be using trial frames, a pen torch, two loose Maddox rod lenses and loose prisms. Please note you may use two red or one white and one red Maddox rod to allow easier identification of which line belongs to which eye. The indications of use for the double Maddox rod include when a patient has a cover test result that shows a vertical deviation, a vertical muscle palsy is suspected, you have a cooperative and reliable patient, and the patient complains of double vision where the second image is tilted. To set up the trial frames ready for the test, place each Maddox rod in the trial frames. Align the axis of the rods at 90 degrees. The image seen by the patient will be perpendicular to the rod, so in this case will produce a horizontal line. Loose prisms may also be placed in the trial frames if required. Adele Smith, would you like to follow me? My name is Denise, I'm a student orthoptist. I'll get you to take a seat for me, please. Okay, I'm just going to pop these trial frames on you today. Okay, mm -hmm. they just go behind your ears. I'm going to tighten them as well. So using these, you can just tighten it. And I'm also going to make sure at the front that these are nice and vertical, so they're both sitting at 90 degrees. And you can use this to adjust. So we're just going to switch off the lights so you can see the lines a little bit clearer. We're going to shine the torch at the bridge of the patient's nose at about one third of a metre and ask the patient, what do you see? So Adele, what can you see now? Uh, two lines. Perfect. Okay, Adele, I want you to show me using your hands what exactly you can see. So using your arms, show me where the lines are. Yeah. Just like that. Mm -hmm. If a patient has no vertical or horizontal deviation, the lines can become difficult to compare. So we can use a loose prism like this to separate the images to allow for easy comparison. So we can either use it uh, base out, base in, base up or base down, depending on the deviation. Or if they have a large horizontal or vertical deviation, these prisms can also be used to bring the images closer together to allow for easier comparison. The prism you use will depend on the patient's personal horizontal or vertical deviation. For example, a patient with an esotropia may need a base out prism placed in front of the deviated eye. Bringing the two images closer together and making it easier to identify if they are parallel. Okay Adele, so now what we're going to try and do is make those lines nice and parallel if possible. So what you can do is there's a little dial on the side that we can rotate to make the lines parallel. Okay, so what you can do is grabbing your hand, that's it, perfect. I want you to turn that dial until they look parallel. Great. Okay Adele, now that we've moved the trial frames, show me again with your arms, where are the lines? Perfect. Hot tip. Remember, you're recording the position of the eye, not the image. Hot tip. Starting at 90, 
in towards the nose measures in cycloduction and out towards the ear measures ex cycloduction. When recording your result, remember to list the name of the test as well as the amount and direction of reported torsion. Hot tip. When recording, you are measuring the change from 90 degrees. So if the Maddox rod is positioned at 100 degrees, then the patient's eye is 10 degrees ex cyclo rotated. Likewise, if the Maddox rod is positioned at 80 degrees, this would indicate that the eye is 10 degrees in cyclo rotated. This depends on the trial frames and which eye the measurement is being taken from. Along with the results gathered from other tests, you can use this information to consider the action of each of the muscles and therefore indicate which muscle is likely to be affected. Hot tip. The greatest amount of torsion will be in the position of the secondary action of the muscle. Limitations of the double Maddox rod include that congenital and long-standing cyclotropia patients may not report torsion as this is a subjective test. Fundus photography should therefore be performed to confirm the presence or absence of a cyclorotational deviation as this is an objective test. If previous investigations have indicated the patient has abnormal retinal correspondence or dense suppression, the double Maddox rod should not be performed. This may mask the true size of the deviation or prevent the patient from seeing both lines. As this is a subjective test, it is particularly important the patient understands the test requirements in order to achieve accurate results. Hot tip. Remember, we can't base our diagnosis off this one test. <laughs>